Hello students, I would like to do this brief video to help you see a few examples. Remember that your assignment for this asynchronous meeting is to simply type in a three to five sentence brief summary of what this little lesson is about. No need to take notes, but if you wanna pause and take some screenshots, I do highly advise it. First, a quick review of all of the formulas. Remember that A sub N stands for a term in the list. So A sub three would be the third term in the list and that can refer to a geometric term or an arithmetic term. S sub N stands for a sum of some number of terms. So S sub three would be to add up A sub one, A sub two, and A sub three. There is a, an infinite geometric sum that is possible only when R is between zero and one. It has to be a small fraction that makes the number um, get smaller over time. Okay, so there's three basic types of problems that you're gonna run into in this unit. Of course, they can fall into any of those five, or sorry, four areas that we just had on the previous page. So it could be arithmetic or geometric, could be a sequence or a series that we're talking about. But even within those spaces, we, there's essentially three types of problems that you can go through. In the left-hand column right here, I have two examples of mostly straightforward problems. So the very first one, I'm giving you an example where a sub 1 is 3. So it's telling you the first term of the sequence is 3. It tells me d equals negative 2. That's a difference. That's telling me that this is an arithmetic sequence. So negative 2 means I'm going to subtract 2 to find the next term. Subtract two more, subtract two more, subtract two more, and keep going. The question here, I've got two possible questions, one of which is what would be the 24th term? In order to do that, I'm gonna to go to my A sub N formula, and the A sub N formula says find A sub one, add the difference times N minus one. So right here we see N, Right here we see the difference, and right here we see a sub one. Those are the values that I've plugged into the formula. At this point, it's very easy to just go ahead and simplify. So I've got three plus negative two times 23, which all simplifies down to negative 43. Um, as a second example for this problem, we have s sub 24, so that's asking for a partial sum. So s sub 24. Again, just head back to that formula. Um, let me write the whole formula for you guys so you can see how I'm plugging in. I've got a sub 1 plus a sub n times n divided by 2. So I know that n in this case is 24. My first term is 3. My 24th term I need to figure out, which I've already done here. So if this was asking for perhaps... Um, s sub 60, then you would need to take a moment to find a sub 60 and do that work. Uh, but here I'm going to go ahead and I've already done that work for a sub 24 above. So I've got 3 plus negative 43 times n, n in this case is 24, all divided by 2. Again, this is something you can go ahead and just throw into a calculator. Oops, I missed my negative sign. Negative 480, right there would be my total sum of the first 24 numbers in this sequence. If I wrote this out all the way to the 24th term and added them all up, I would have negative 480. Okay, below I have a similarly straightforward problem, but this is given to me in summation notation. So let's take a minute to break down the summation notation. This tells me the n value where we start counting. This tells me the n value where we stop listing everything, and this is the formula that we're going to use in order to create the list. Um, I see that this is 5n plus 3. This is a linear value right here, so this is an arithmetic sequence that's being presented for me, and this is asking for the first through the 15th number, add them all up. So in order to do this, I could actually say, okay, the first number is going to be 5, plug in 1 plus 3. Um, here, let me label this a sub 1. That's an 8. I could plug in 2 is going to be 5 times 2 plus 3. That's 10 plus 3 equals 13. You can see right here that we've got, uh, oh, I meant to change the color, sorry, that we've got the 
common difference right here is going to be plus 5. So I could continue going in this. I know that my next number would be 18, then 23, and so on. Um, starting with um, kind of a zeroth term is kind of what we could say for that 3, because that would be like if I went backwards to get a 3, that would be like the zeroth term if I plugged in 0 for n. I don't need to create this list, however, because when I have the summation notation, I'm told exactly what n is going to equal for my sum. So I need to do my 15th sum. I've got a sub 1 plus a sub 15 all times 15 and divided by, oops, didn't mean to write that, 2. So a sub 1, I do need to figure that out, and I did it right here already, so I'm going to plug in 8. A sub 15, I need to step aside for a second and I need to figure that out. I'm just going to plug in 15 right there. So 5 times 15 plus 3. 5 times 15 plus 3 is 48. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and plug in down here at the bottom. Multiply everything by 15 and divide by 2. And this I can just plug straight into a calculator and I get a total sum of 420. Okay. The middle column is problems that are missing a little bit of additional information. So notice in this case, um, on the top, what I'm given is a first term and a 25th term, and they're asking me for a 100th term. I am not told in this particular case if this is arithmetic or geometric, so it's not actually possible for me to finish this exact problem. Um, let's assume for a second that I'm told that this is arithmetic. Um, so that means that I'm looking for some sort of common difference that would result in that A sub 25 of 77. So I've got a little bit of missing information that I need to go hunting for. I'm going to go ahead and bust out that example on the next page. On the bottom, I have 8 plus 10 plus 12, da, 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 all the way up to 52. So I can see right here this is plus 2, plus 2, etc. Okay, well, I know that my common difference is 2. This is an arithmetic sequence. Um, but in this case, I know that I'm going to get to 52, but the question is, what is n right here? Whereas here, I didn't know what the common difference was, so I, I don't have enough information to figure out um, the formula that's necessary for a sub 100. Here, I'm missing n. So we have to do a little bit of backwards work first before we can move forward and figure out what's going on. On the right-hand side, what we have is a situation of summation notation where we've got this weird starting term, and this does happen on occasion. Um, notice that I did the same um, equation as what we have over here on the left, so it's still 5n plus 3. This is still stopping at 15, but instead of starting at the first term, this is starting at the fifth term. So we already figured out a little bit of this sequence before. We know that this sequence would start with the first term of 8, then 13, 18, 23, 28, and so on. Starting at the fifth term means I'm not going to start until right here. This is a sub 5. I'm going to take these first four terms and I'm going to take them out of s sub 15. There's a couple different ways to figure this out. You can take s sub 15 and then you could subtract s sub 4. Do two different equations for each of those and subtract. Or you can do an s sub 11 of the 11 remaining terms knowing that your new a sub 1 is actually 28. Either of those are going to work for you, but you've got to figure out some strategy to deal with that. Um, notice that the way that I got 11, let me change my color here. The, the way that I got 11 is by taking um, the 15 minus 4, because it's four terms to subtract. Number of terms taken out, because I'm starting with the fifth. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 4. Um, so anyway, just want to give you guys two different strategies right here that you can work through. Okay, let's go back to those missing information problems. So here's both of them. Let's get through these in a little bit more detail. So on the left, again, remember that we would have to be told that this is arithmetic or geometric. Otherwise, um, I wouldn't be able to know what I'm doing. Am I multiplying continually to get to 77 or what's happening here? Um, I'm going to start with just the basic formula, and I'm going to plug in what I can to see what I can solve for. So if I tried to go straight to a sub 100, I know that already I don't know what the difference is, and I'm going to be stuck. 
But we do have a lot of other information here that's given to us that we can plug in with. So what I'm going to actually plug in is all of that information right here for A sub 25 equaling 77. I get 77 by starting with my first term of 5 and adding some difference 25 minus 1 times. But this gives me an equation that I can solve for. Subtract that 5 from both sides. I get 72 equals D times 24. I'm just simplifying that in parentheses. Go ahead and divide by 24, and I find out that my difference is 3. At this point, I'm now ready to go ahead and actually plug into that A sub 100 formula, where now I can do 5 plus my difference of 3. Go ahead and plug in that 100, and I'm ready to go. I get 302 as my final answer for my 100th term. But I had to do a little hunting first, and this was my clue. I looked at a formula, and I, I, I wanted to see what I could plug in where it would leave me with just one open value, and that was my difference, and that was the difference that I needed to find. Okay, on the right-hand side, we know that this is a series. We've already identified that this is a common difference of 2, so I'm going to look for my S sub n formula for my arithmetic series. So this is a sub 1 plus a sub n times n all divided by 2. And let's see what we can plug in. a sub 1 right here is 8. a sub n is the last term. That's 52. I need to multiply by the number of terms and divide by 2. I don't know what that number is yet, so this is where I have to do a little bit of hunting off to the side. I can go ahead and use um, the a sub n formula to my advantage here. So I'm going to step aside, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to use my a sub n formula of my first term plus my identified difference times n minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and plug in 52 and figure out what is that n value there. 52 comes out of this formula somehow. What is n when that happens? So um, let's see, let's solve this one really quick. That is 46 equals 2 times n minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. Oops, sorry, bad writing. And then add 1. I get 24 equals n, and that's what I'm ready to go ahead and plug in over here now. So now I know that I've got my 24th sum equals 8 plus 52, 60, times 24, all divide by 2. I'm ready to go ahead and simplify and get 690. Again, I just had to do a little hunting for some missing information first. Okay, that's all I have for you guys. Please, a three to five uh, sentence summary on just kind of what this video was about and what you were able to get out of it. Um, of course, I didn't do any geometric examples for you in this case, but same process, just slightly different formulas. Make sure that you're dealing with those exponents appropriately and always reach out to me if you need some help.